many people prefer to plan all their further actions and stay in the course, go to the target. However, life tends to throw surprises and by that open some other doors to future, opening up a new side of us. The heroine of our today's program, Yeva Schmidt, has found it more than once in her life. Our heroine was born in a small town in the southwest of Germany called St. Ingbert. Legend has it that the town was founded many centuries ago and named after an Irish saint. Mishmi, through your work as the director of the educational institution, you often watch the behavior of students of different ages. What feelings does it provoke in you and evoke memories of your own childhood or youth? Were you yourself a good student? It's an interesting question. I see on a daily basis the students that we have at the Goethe Institute. And they are not the youngest, let's say they are teenagers and a bit older. And they do remind me in some points of myself, but also it's changed over the years how students are nowadays. I feel like they have a lot more fun. That might also be because they come on a voluntary basis and it seems like they're always in a good mood when they show up. And for me, childhood going to school was a, a good experience. I liked it because I liked studying, I liked learning. And in that sense, yes, I was a good student. Always did my homework, always um, did what the teachers asked because for me it was uh, the interesting bit, the fun bit, was to study, to gain knowledge. I liked reading. I guess that was part of what I had mentioned, that knowledge gaining, information gaining, was something that always interested me. The more, the more information I could get about no matter which topics, actually, the more curious I became and then it spread out. So basically I was curious about everything I liked in that sense, going to the library, getting books on a certainly weekly basis, sometimes even more often, you know, piles of books, bringing home, bringing back. In that sense, I was probably what, what we would call a bookworm, you know, spending lots of time reading, um, which sometimes annoyed my parents because I also tended to read on the table when we were having lunch or dinner, which I agree wouldn't be the nicest way to spend time together. But I sometimes was so fixated on what I was reading that I found that more important than anything else. I was stubborn, I know that. I'm a very stubborn person. If I have my mind set on something, then I try to get that. Um, but I was not doing any mischief or creating problems. And where did you spend your childhood? What remarkable things about places you grew up in can you mention? I grew up in a small town in Germany, actually an area that hardly any German knows. So it's very provincial, a bit out there. It's a locally strongly connected area. So people there know each other well. It's a strong community, but it seems like the rest of Germany is really interested in that bit. And since it's so close to France, some people actually think that we speak French or in the area as French is spoken, which is not true. And the town where I grew up is just a smaller city, about 30,000 inhabitants that people only pass by when they go, let's say, from Frankfurt to Paris. But it isn't really a place to stop, so most people have no clue. Um, it's situated quite nicely because there are woods around it, forests, and so many times my parents liked walking on Sundays and it was being a small town of course easy for children to grow up cycling wherever we wanted to or going to a playground. We did lots of these things in smaller groups of friends running around outside which is more difficult of course to do in a bigger city. So that was just a very nice childhood. As far as I know, you grew up in a big family. What traditions and common interests united all of you and allowed you to spend more time together? 
I have indeed an unusually, for Germany, unusually big family. I have two older brothers and one younger sister, and also my grandparents live in the same house with us. We were really close together, so it's 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 always been a, a strong ties within the kids as the kids group, basically. So all four of us, as much as with uh, the family around us. And my family is very musical, so we all play instruments, we sang a lot um, at home, in the car, when we're going on trips. It's a number of different instruments, so I guess the, the dream that my parents once had, that we would all play in a small, like a chamber orchestra together, that didn't really work out. I was the one, I'd say, who's probably the least musical in that context because I was often and still am interested in visual arts more. My oldest brother is a musician, a professional musician. My sister builds pianos. My mother still plays the flute, so it's, it's despite her rather advanced age, so it's, it's inherited in the family. Since Eva was a little girl, she liked to create something with her hands that led her to study different forms of visual art. And even today, she devotes time to some creative pursuits whenever possible. In addition, our heroine enjoys getting acquainted with the culture of other nations in all its manifestations. At that, she leads an active lifestyle, sparing time to hiking, skiing and also engaging in swimming and bicycling since her childhood. I suppose as a child, you dreamt of another profession. Did you try somehow to realize your dream? I hadn't thought about becoming an artist. As I said, visual arts is something I was interested in from childhood onwards. I like drawing, painting. I went to museums voluntarily with my parents and even on my own, and I still do. Um, it's something that intellectually stimulates a lot. I find that it's another way of thinking I would say so I actually did study art and art education and lots of my work nowadays still is connected not to the physical working as an artist obviously but of course I get to meet so many interesting uh, people the projects that we do so I'm still within the arts and cultural context What way did you go from a university student to an honorary position at the Goethe Institute? It was not automatically my given way, so let's put it that way. I wasn't really sure what to do after I was done studying, since I studied art and art education, um, economics, business management as well, and some psychology too and I worked on some art projects with a, a group of other artists. On, in my spare time I earned my money in a law firm and I somehow didn't really know which one to pursue, which to focus and then just a, a, a basically an advertisement for jobs from the Goethe Institute came in and I applied and I moved step by step. Then how did it happen that you continue to work at the Institute to this day? At what point did you desire to gain an experience, turn into love to your profession? It developed over time. When I started out, I was working in Prague partially, so I already got to know the entire scope of the work of the Goethe Institute abroad. Um, then I was offered a job in our head office in Munich in the visual arts department, which really relates to where I come from and what my interests are and I stayed there for five years and then I moved to London where I could head the cultural program department so I was still working along the same lines within culture, within arts. It is never boring, it's always something new, you learn a lot, um, it's the combination out of having the input from other people, local partners, international partners artists, filmmakers, uh, musicians, authors, composers, journalists. Um, in, on one hand, it's the language work that we do, um, teaching German as a foreign language. So you have the, the local students coming from all ages, all backgrounds. So it's, it's a wide field of work and you get to know the most interesting people. 
can you say that Kazakhstan was in your list of the countries that you wish to visit or your arrival here was just a combination of some circumstances? It was actually the latter. So in my job we apply for various number of posts uh, because we're based in a so-called rotation system, meaning I move every few years from one place, from one country to the next. And to come to Kazakhstan, it was on my list somewhere, but not on the very first spots. And it was just there by coincidence because I'm deeply curious. And a colleague, of course, told me about this post here, the city, the place. And then I thought, well, I'll, I'll put it on there, but I actually didn't expect that to happen. EFA brought a fresh perspective that gave an impulse to a new approach to the work of the Institute. Anyone who comes from distant foreign countries does not manage to immediately adjust to the culture of Central Asian countries, comprehend the way of thinking, so that it would be possible to evaluate objectively all the work we do. Therefore, EFA deserves compliments, since in only one year and a half of her stay in Kazakhstan, she has succeeded in getting into the way of life and understanding the mentality of the people of this country, and thereby has managed to quickly plunge into the work atmosphere. Had you gathered any information about our country before coming to work here? Yes, I did. Quite a lot, actually. I bought some books that a colleague recommended. I started reading them. haven't finished all of them yet. It was a mix of guidebooks, of biographies, of general information about the history, about the country. It is still highly impressive that it's such a big, big, a huge country, the ninth biggest country in the world. It's just something that still impresses me and that gets me because growing up in Europe where you, within a few hours, you are usually in a different country depending on which direction you go. This is still something I find highly interesting. Please tell us a little bit about your work responsibilities for today and the way you try to contribute to the education of our young generation. Besides being the head of the institute, I am responsible for the cultural program together with my team. So we develop new ideas, what to do here in our office spaces, but also with partners, um, film series, um, workshops. Uh, we would like to set a focus next year on architecture and urban development. So within Almaty uh, they're, they're, we'll work around the modernist building from the Soviet times which are still here in abundance. Um, that's an example. A mix of having some genres. We're doing a jazz tour, jazz concerts every year and choosing specific topics to work with and then finding the local partners, organizations, institutions, museums to see that through. That can be talks, panel discussions, it can be exhibitions, so it's a wide variety addressing to a general audience. What achievements are you proud of most of all and what other heights in life would you like to reach? I'm quite happy that I had the chance to work, to live in so many places. Being a teenager on, when I went to the US for one year at high school, I managed to go out and about time and again with private life, with work life, which is something that really helped me grow. The other high is, how to say, actually a more difficult question, because I don't know yet. I sometimes take things as they come, and there is not this final or this ultimate goal I have because I think I'm still way too curious to pick up what comes along the way. So I will see what comes next. I'll stay here for some years and then just look at the future as it comes on the present day basis.